So we're back with this review for this recent top step trader combine that I've passed. This that you see in front of you is the prior one that I passed last August. So here's the post. I will link to it in the description box below. But you can check it on the blog Friday, August the 19th, combine passed. If you go back there or use the search box, you'll find it. And what I thought we'd do is have a look at these stats and then compare them to the ones I've managed on this combine. So briefly, I won't go into all the stats, but the key headline ones, obviously past the combine means 1,500 or thereabouts. So I had a little positive slippage because I, I was in uh, two, I, I needed to go one more tick in order to pass the combine. Or, or something so that's why it's a little bit more than a thousand five hundred and eight a thousand five hundred you can see I did a lot of uh, gross profit and a lot of gross loss as well to come out with a 1.17 profit factor with nine hundred and fifty six dollars and some change of commission profit is the same as up here and then we have max drawdown which is a very important number for me thousand one hundred eighty eight dollars and twenty five cents so to achieve a thousand five hundred I had to draw down almost a thousand two hundred um, and then you have these are the stats here 260 trades one out of every three trades profitable five dollars and eighty cents for the average trade 2.37 to 1 reward to risk so one out of three but each time I win 2.37 times what I lose after commission costs. So those are the main stats there. And then you have a visual of the days that I traded. So the positive days and their magnitude. So quite a few are around $300. Uh, obviously a lot more or less than 300 and then several, I think it was seven when I counted at or around 300 and then one outlier day of over $400. And then on the flip side, a bunch of $100 to $200 losing days with a few people in their head between two to 300 and one outlier day again. This is the curve as Ninja Trader shows it. And then these are the stats after I had made uh, a tweak to the strategy. So that's that. If we click out here and go to this this is now it says a thousand six hundred and fifty because there are three erroneous trades in this data set there's one win in 6b for two hundred and seventy five dollars and uh, sorry uh, one win in YM for two hundred and seventy five dollars and two losses in 6b for a total of hundred and twenty five dollars so we're out with we've got hundred and fifty more than we should because of those three erroneous trades so the gross profit you would have to take off 275 and the gross loss you'd have to add 150 uh, 125 to this amount commissions 474 that's because we took far fewer trades we took 129 trades remember there are three erroneous trades so about half as many as first the first time round 41.67% win rate so two out of every five rather than one out of every three thereabouts average trade twelve dollars fifty and at just about a two to one this makes obviously you can tell by the average trade that the expectancy is almost twice as big as what I achieved last time I believe or more than twice as much because we had 590 or five something and now we have 1250 <clears throat> uh, max winners, consecutive winners, consecutive losers. The big number for me, profit factor 1.42, so that's an increase up from the prior one of 1.17. But the big one for me, the one that I've got my eye on, is the max drawdown. Uh, less than half of the drawdown, so half the number of trades and less than half the drawdown sustained. <coughs> Excuse me which means that we can do more with less. I'm all about the risk rather than the reward. I want to look at this number. And so that gives me confidence because I drew down a third of the drawdown that was available. Um, 
so that's that. Let's have a look at some, some graphs. So there's the cumulative profit graph. But the thing that I noticed when I was going back, daily net profit, um, was if we look at this, um, this day here, I'll have to, I'm going to pause the video and check. Okay, yeah, that day did actually happen because I've got my trade report over here on the, the right and it does show that my worst day was $243.40 down. So that means that did happen. It's not part of the Erinus subset of trades. So say from one losing day, every one of my, my losing days were about a hundred dollars down or less which i personally think is remarkable um you know i haven't counted how many losing days there are i think we'll go we'll get to that in a second i think there are 17. um but to have no losing day greater than a hundred down to the downside is just an awesome way to trade i think and and you know if you go up to 10 contracts then you will never lose more than a thousand dollars in any one day and i like i like this statistic a lot so i thought i'd share that with you and is there anything else monthly net profit it took me one two three we're into the fourth month because i did a little bit of march went to london came back um april may and now these first few days of june and uh, weekly net profit, the last one, two, three, four, we're on the, our fifth week of profits. Like, so we've had four positive weeks, and so far this week is positive. Two slight down weeks, and then more positive weeks here. So that's cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 12 weeks. And, um, that's about it. Tr trade profit and loss. This might be an interesting one to look at. All trades, obviously, because I have a fixed stop and I don't trail my stop, really, apart from the odd occasion where I caved in and took break even. In general, I keep the stops where they are and I gun for profits or take them off if I've got daily profits or there's news announcements or it's the end of the day. So when you see all these little, these green dots down here, it's for one of a few reasons. Either there was news, I had achieved my profit objective for the day, or it was the end of the day. And then anything sort of above 100 are things where I've targeted gains and achieved them. And then you have this massive outlier up here on, I don't know what instrument that was on, but 350-ish dollars which is unusual so you have a few outliers up there one outlier down here which was when i was experimenting with um, order flow and i let something get away from me to the downside and apart from that everything else so this is a nice visual again of what you can do with patience and consistency over time and I think that's about it for the Ninja Trader stuff. So now I will pause the video and we'll look at my own spreadsheet. So here's my own spreadsheet. Uh, 54 wins, 75 losses, 41.86% win rate, 1.933 or 9, yeah, 934, 1.93 reward to risk ratio. Uh, 0.22 point, 0.2281 expectancy, so about 22.8% expectancy, 129 trades, and as you can see, 28 cents over the target. I've since um, putting out that video, I've installed this formula into the spreadsheet so that we can see the max drawdown as well, 583 dollars and five cents. Um, what else? We did trade, this says 48 days, yeah, so we traded 48 days uh, with the winning days being slightly bigger than the losing days, 1.0563, so 5.63% bigger than the losing days, but, the, but a 
pretty much a two to one. So for every losing day, two winning days. Nice and steady, and uh, that's the result. What else can we look at? The equity curve. This is the equity curve. So we've um, had a, a stunning run up recently, which obviously won't continue. But uh, that's what brought me to the target in a hurry over the last se several days after a lot of chop and uh, a nice cup here before a breakout. Is there anything else we can look at? Profit and loss by trade, we've already looked at that. Winning and losing days, we've pretty much looked at that as well on Ninja Trader. And that's it. That's, that's all she wrote really. So what did I learn? I didn't really learn anything new, more like um, reaffirming some old uh, or not so old beliefs that I've created in the last um, 18 to 24 months or so. So let me bring over the blog. I'll just pause the video. Yeah, if I had to sum up what I've learned or relearned over these past several weeks, um, it's what I wrote in this post um, in December, early December, 100%, how to make 100% in less than six months. Um, make the strategy as simple as possible. That's been crucial. Just the fewer bolts it has. I want, I want um, uh, what are they called? The Flintstones. We, we want a Flintstones car. We don't want an engine and all lots of contraptions and stuff. Just make it basic and crude. As long as it can make a game, that's all I'm looking for. So that's what I did with my strategy. Get comfortable. The magic, the real magic, comes in getting comfortable refusing setups. And, and then these two, if I had to tell anyone the secret to my um, modest success so far, it would be think super long term for results. Completely as much as possible, ignore your results in the short term and then think super, super short term for the process. And do, do monitor yourself, make sure you're doing everything correctly in the short term. Because it's, it's like, um, I think of it as a quilt, a quilt made up of perfect present moments. Um, you want to string as many perfect actions together in the short term until you have a quilt, a blanket, that results in a long-term result, but you won't get the result in the short term, at least not consistently. Sometimes you'll do the right thing in the short term and you'll get the right result, but you definitely will get the right result if you just keep your head down and focus on, um, you know, hitting those singles and sticking to the process. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, if I had to boil it down to anything, it would be, this would be my mantra, three and four. Super long term for results, super short term for the process. And so that's what I've done now. Uh, it's on to FTP now, which is going to be another long slog, maybe, or maybe I'll uh, do it in less time. Who knows? But I'm pretty sure I will make it and make at least a few hundred dollars per month per contract. So this is a little pit stop, a little time for a brief celebration and then back on the horse, so to speak, um, uh, tomorrow once they give me confirmation. So that's it for now and I'll catch you all in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff if you're interested in keeping up with my journey and I will see you in the next video. Take care and bye for now.